with a BT15 update. Um, basically what we've been doing lately, Wayne's been working on the uh, front end of the airplane, uh, installing all the accessories, the mags, fuel pump, vacuum pump, uh, changing out lines and making sure everything that firewall forward is, uh, is correct. And lot, yesterday he just finished putting the uh, prop on for good. He had the prop on earlier for the time of the mags. And so that's all secured. So basically everything here is, is finished except for the battery installation. So that's coming along real nice. And then uh, as far as the rest of the airplane, um, fuselage and all is all pretty much buttoned up. Uh, too much left to do on there. Uh, we have to finish installing uh, brake lines and a few things uh, in that area. But what I'm working on is the tail. That's the last big item on the airplane is the installation of the horizontal stabilizers and the rudder. Uh, vertical fin has already been on the airplane, but the original horizontal stabilizers that came with the airplane were in really, really poor shape. When we did an inspection of them, they had a lot of corrosion internally, and they weren't really worth saving. So we ended up finding another pair of uh, horizontals uh, from a guy that I know and we're able to clean those up and paint those. And so right now I attached those and I'm actually trying to install the elevators and then once all that's together we'll put the whole thing on as a unit and then once that's done we'll finish rigging out the tail and then we'll it'll come out of the shop because at that point we have to put the outer wing panels on it and we can't do that here in the shop because of course we'll never get it out of here. So it's getting close to exiting the shop and moving into either the north or south hangar or do the final assembly and rigging. All right, here we are, everybody. Uh, working on the finishing up the Vaulty BT-15. And we're gonna kind of do a little walk around of actually what we did to this airplane. And kind of before we get into that, we can talk about what is a BT-15. A lot of people don't know what the airplane is. And of course, during World War II, they were training a lot of pilots, and they needed airplanes to uh, advance pilots through training. And when you started out, you would start out flying a Stearman or an N3N, any of the PT airplanes, which were primary trainers. After that, you would graduate into basic training airplane, and that was the BT-13, BT-15 series of aircraft. They're both the same airplanes. Uh, a lot of people don't know what the difference is. The 15 had a bright 975 and the 13 had a 985. That's the only difference between the two airplanes other than that, the same exact airframe. And so they used these airplanes all through World War II to train a lot of pilots. They built a god awful number of these airplanes. I think it's like 15,000 of these things that were built. It's just crazy how many were constructed. And of course after the war they just went for nothing. I think you could buy a BT-13 surplus in 1946 for like $400. Uh, so then, uh, but today, not that many of them around. Uh, which is kind of sad. I would bet you there's probably less than, as far as flyers, maybe a couple of dozen um, that are airworthy. Um, but this is an airplane that uh, Kermit bought. Uh, it was bought as a flying airplane. Uh, we decided to basically kind of go through. We didn't do a full restoration. What I mean by that is we didn't take the entire airplane completely apart and tear it completely down and change everything. There was a lot of elements to the airplane that were just fine. And we didn't want to sink a lot of time and money into the airplane and going doing things that weren't necessary because the BT-15, 13s don't have a huge value. So you can actually pour a lot of money into one of these airplanes and not get it back. So we'd elected just to clean the airplane up, do what we could to to make the airplane better. So a lot of people ask, where do you start on these projects? And I always like to start at the center of the airplane, which in the case of a lot of these aircrafts would be the center section. And the center section basically is, is part of the wing. It actually attaches to the fuselage. It's this portion right here, and that's what we started with. And the BT-13, this is the downfall of this airplane. The center section holds the fuel uh, for the airplane. And most aircraft, there's three ways you can put fuel in the airplane. Either they had an aluminum tank that was bolted and strapped into the, into the wing structure, or it was a, a rubber bladder that was actually also strapped in. But in the case of the BT-13, they went to a very strange thing. It's a wet wing, which means the structure of the wing itself is the tank, which is kind of what they use today on modern jet airliners. And the advantage of that, of course, is, is range, because it holds a lot more fuel. The disadvantage of it is it leaks, <laughs> especially with a training airplane with a lot of abuse and stuff. A kind of an interesting choice that Volti made to go with a wet wing, and that is a very difficult thing. And the first thing that had to be done to this airplane is the center section had to be opened up on the bottom, the skins removed on the underneath, all the old seal cleaned out. 
uh, resealed, new skins, new inspection plates, tanks sloshed, checked for leaks, and then put back together again. A lot of time went into that, but you really have to do that with the BT airplanes because that's very critical. Uh, so that was done, center section uh, finished, painted, and then of course we went on to the fuselage. Now the fuselage is kind of what we left alone because there was a lot of things about it that were just fine, but we did do some things internally. All the instruments were sent out for overhaul because they were in pretty sad shape, so those all went out. All the instrument hoses, all the internal hoses were changed, that's all been done. And all the canopy glass, all the sliding, plexi, the glass on the windshield, that was all changed. It was in very poor condition. In fact, the front windshield frame and the back turtle deck frame had to be changed. Those pieces were in very poor shape. We were able to source out some new parts and change those. So basically that's all we had to do with the inside of the airplane. And then from there, of course, we, we did some paint work on the fuselage. The paint scheme we decided on was, was a navy scheme. There's only three, three correct schemes for the BT-13 series airplanes. That was yellow and blue, which was early on in its career. Some airplanes were mostly just basically overall silver or unpainted airplanes. The Navy actually had some really cool airplanes. The NAS Corpus Christi in Texas, um, they had airplanes, they were called SNV 1s and 2s. That's what the Navy designated the airplane. And they had some interesting schemes. One of them was NAS, Naval Air Station Corpus Christi, Texas. And that's what this airplane represents, 1942, which is silver fuselage, yellow wings, uh, red bands on the uh, wings and also red tail. The red bands actually uh, made it or identified it as an instrument trainer. That's another reason uh, they used the BTs for, was a lot of instrument training. So we thought it was a colorful scheme, kind of gives the airplane uh, some interesting uh, appeal. So that's the uh, pink scheme that we chose. So can, continuing on from the fuselage after we did some paint work, uh, again internally on the tail we didn't have to do anything that was pretty sound. Uh, new luggage compartment though, as a Becky B thirteen has a really cool has a it has a uh, little canvas baggage compartment uh, inside of that. And that's an NOS piece that we actually found. Amazingly, you can find uh, new parts for these airplanes. A lot of parts for the BT thirteen out there. It's, it's all, you can buy just about anything for it. There's a couple of people that have quite a, pretty big collections of parts uh, for the BT. So nice new luggage compartment in there. And then going back to the tail. Close that. The tail actually needed a lot of work. Uh, we, we, this was all taken apart because when the airplane was shipped to us, it was all disassembled. And a closer inspection of the horizontal stabilizers revealed a lot of internal corrosion. Um, they weren't really worth rebuilding, so we sourced some better uh, horizontal stabilizers. Both sides uh, had to be replaced, so those were cleaned up, painted, and put on the airplane. Uh, the control services, the elevator, rudder, uh, those are all recovered. They're fabric covered, fabric covered control surfaces. Uh, so those all had to be redone and painted. And the vertical stabilizer is original for the airplane, but back inside, we looked inside and there was actually some corrosion uh, inside of there. So we had to take part of that apart, repair that damage and put it back together again and repaint it. So that's all sourced out and the tail cone put back on again. Uh, stenciling, decals all in place, and of course the SNV2 identification on the tail. And, uh, so that pretty much took the tail, um, finished up. The trim had to be, all the trim cables had to be redone. We had some issues with that, trying to get the trim cables back in. A lot of them were in bad shape, so we decided just to change all those so it would rig out a lot better. And so that's finished, and brand new uh, not brand new, but uh, replacement trim tabs. These were also uh, corroded. The rudder was fine, but the other ones were corroded, so we got to source some new pieces. And if you notice, they have a little extension on them. When these airplanes were surplus after the war, and they were certified by the CAA, which is now the FAA, uh, there were some changes you had to make to the airplane. And one of them was a two inch extension to the elevator trim tab. Apparently they didn't feel there was enough travel or enough uh, elevator uh, trim tab response, so they had to actually put that on there, and that is still required today uh, on the BT-13 airplanes. So, continuing around to the the right-hand side of the airplane, basically it's the same same paintwork was done, um, and uh, all the panels on this side of the airplane. BT-13 is really cool because it has the side panels are removable just by Zeus fasteners. You can actually open up the entire airplane very quickly for maintenance. Those were in very good condition. We didn't have to do anything of those other than just repaint them. All the wing fairings were fine. 
uh, reinstalled those and painted them. And again, the center section continues on to the side, and and that's all fine. New wing walk placed on there because it had all to be, had to be stripped off along with all the old paint, and so we put all new wing walk on there. Flaps again recovered both the inboard and outboard flaps. Uh, brand new fabric on those. And just the other day, we put the outer wing panels on. The outer wing panels were in really, really nice shape. Uh, internally, we inspected them very closely. There were no issues at all. Uh, again, we just repainted those and put those uh, back on the airplane. Ailerons had to be recovered. Uh, aileron uh, left one is sitting on the saw horses over here uh, with brand new fabric that's waiting to be installed. And both wing tips were also in pretty good condition and uh, it's a little bit of repair work had to be done to them, but basically in good shape. All right, coming up to the, the front of the airplane, the, the propeller was removed. Uh, it, was, it was kind of tired, so we sent it out and have it, uh, had it overhauled, had it anodized, and had it re-tipped to the Navy, uh, the Navy three color tips, which were kind of cool. Uh, the engine itself, um, it's not too bad. It has some time on it, but not too much time. I think it has about five, 550 hours on it. It still seems fine. We didn't want to spend the extra $20,000 to have a 975 uh, overhauled, although you, you can still do that, but we feel that it still has some life in it. So we went through the engine, it's, it's fine. Everything behind the engine, carburetor, magnetos, fuel pump, uh, everything back there was sent out for overhaul. All the hoses behind the engine, all the connections, fuel lines, oil lines, everything, that was all changed. So that's all nice and done um, back there. Um, landing gear, uh, basically in good shape. BT-13 is a fixed gear airplane, pretty simple, pretty stout. Um, tires and wheels are new. Uh, brakes have to be um, uh, adjusted, but those are all in pretty good shape. And new spark plugs. Again, we painted everything. The, the top cowling is, is OD, but the fractional side front cowlings are red. So that kind of ties in with the tail of the airplane and also has a big 45 buzz number on the, on the cowling. And so it's uh, getting pretty close here. Uh, we've got a couple things we have to do as far as uh, uh, antenna installation. The BT-13 had a huge antenna mast. Uh, on it, but when I actually bolted this on here, I realized that something was kind of not right, and it's not the right antenna. Somebody actually cut it like two and a half feet off of it, so I had to find an original mast, and so we had to put that on and run the antenna wire back. Uh, there's some internal things we have to do with the radio. There's a couple of electrical glitches on it uh, that we have to sort us out. Um, but other than that, once we get that finished up, we should be able to pull it out here pretty soon and uh, do some engine runs and see what else goes wrong because <laughs> something else always goes wrong along the way. Hopefully uh, the BT uh, will behave itself. Pirate coconut head is hanging up in there uh, protecting the project as always. Although his right eye did fall out the other day uh, so we had to fix that. Um, but anyways excited about the airplane. It's one of my favorite aircraft. I always love the BT-13. It doesn't get kind of the respect that the T-6 gets. A lot of T-6s around. But uh, you talk to people that fly the airplane now and people that actually flew it back during the war and they, they really like the airplane. It's very forgiving. It has a lot of dihedral in the wing. It's a very stable aircraft. Big wide landing gear. Uh, makes it very easy on the ground to maneuver. It's not prone to ground looping at all. And uh, it's, just, it's just a great little airplane. It's just too bad there aren't too many more BT-13s around. But uh, it's a nice add addition to the collection. And uh, hopefully we'll get it finished up and uh, we'll get it flying.